morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. At a bit of a jaunty angle, because I'm on the move. So we're straight in this morning with the cold room doors. So we want to finish off from where we started yesterday. I've decided I'm going to use the timber that we did have in stock in the end. And once it's screwed to this rigid hollow angle, it's actually taking all the bowing out of it. So we've got one door down there already done. Uh, I've decided not to put them on hinges, so we're just going to sort of prop them into position and then use just a couple of retaining clips on the side. That'll hold the doors in. And then when we want to get access to the cold room, we just take the door off. The hinge idea, I bought the hinges for it, but on reflection, I've got to dick around cobbling like a runner for it so it uh, doesn't drag on the floor. And of course, if you want to have two doors open at the same time, one's going to be in the way of getting the pallet truck in and out, so you're going to have to be opening and closing all the time. This way we can open all four of them with no issue. So we'll just crack on with the build. pub and it's time to get the plumbing on that double sink in the kitchen done today before Stuart opens up it's looking good in here though isn't it eh? it always makes me think I can't believe I put this together every time I see it it's fantastic so in we go to the kitchen we've got a couple of the stainless tables pulled out and this one here is the double sink that I'm going to be working on today. Now Stuart's rosemary there for his gins. So we picked this sink up from a liquidation auction. It came from Hull University and I think it's going to work perfectly as a separate pot washing sink for the kitchen because over there in that corner, so you can't really see it can you? Remember where I had to replace the floor? early on in the vlogs, well that's where we have the glass washer and uh, another sink there, so that's basically just for washing the glasses for the pool. So I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that the kitchen has its own separate sink, you know the food prep area has its own separate sink and that is what this will be once it's all plumbed in. So. We've got the camera set up. I've just got a few more tools to put together and uh, you can already see I've put the waste pipe in but I'm not happy with how it's inserted into the wall. So I'm gonna just change that section there and then down underneath we've just got to connect up that section to the two new uh, P-traps that I put under there or U-bends, whatever you, you know them as. You can just see them there. And then from these two pipes rising here, we've got a hot and a cold feed. We're going to pipe that across to the taps and then the final job will be to push this table back into the position where it came from there and that will then complete the setup. Jobs are good and so now the pub's open. I have to leave. Go and pick up some timber to finish these doors off. 
Would you believe it? We've just been up to the wood yard again to get the last two pieces of timber for the cold room doors. Closed again. I couldn't believe it. So uh, Jack's going to continue with painting. I'm going to just uh, have a look round here, see what I need to do. Probably just put some of the brew kit back in place. And then I'm going to go and have a pint of cider at some point. us home and happy with a pint of the famous Harrison Stout aka the indolent philosopher for those of you that recognize this beer from back in the Idle Valley days it's the same beer mm, slightly different ABV so this was from the second batch that I created I've had a look at my records I didn't know where this beer was actually from the other day when I drank it on camera. It turns out it's the second batch of the Harrison's Brewery Stout that I made where I corrected the ABV issue. Previously it was way too high. So basically what I've just done is taken the Indolent Philosopher recipe and uh, scaled it to the new kit. And of course the ABV issue was because I got some of the numbers wrong. This. And I wanted to bring the ABV down, but unfortunately it went up. This is the new improved version. It's a very nice stout. I never actually won any awards with the stout. Uh, but I always thought it was quite a good beer. Maybe I didn't age it long enough because this has been in a corny keg now for a month or two, maybe three. And I think it really has improved with age. Might see if I can get the recipe together for you guys to to share, so you can brew it at home. I'm talking of the Idle Valley days. Uh, this week I was informed that uh, the arsehole who I was in business with back then, uh, well this idiot got another pub, right? And uh, it was a conflict of interest at the time, and he kept it a secret while he was trying to do me over. Well I've just heard that that pub's gone under and uh, he's had to liquidate everything. Unlucky pal. Swings and roundabouts, isn't it, you see? But on a more positive note, I'm looking out the back window now. I'm home early on a Thursday. Look, it's only half past six. I've had a good chat this afternoon with a mate of mine, Lee. Nice to see him. And uh, now I'm home with a couple of scrumpies inside me. Yes, I drank cider. I'm looking out the back window and thinking, wow, that grass really needs cutting. So, yeah, the grass needs cutting, the hedge needs cutting, and the tayberries need tying up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the vlog here, folks, and I'm going to write a note out with those jobs on, and I'm going to leave it for Gemma, uh, so she knows what she's got to do when she gets in, while I sit back and enjoy a few more of these little rubies. We'll see you on tomorrow's vlog, folks.